Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off with some exoskeleton news, and we're beginning to see a few more of these being used in real world settings. The Apogee by German Bionic is one such exosuit, and it is designed for workers in a range of industries, from warehouse and logistics to caregivers in healthcare settings. Their suits enable both walking assistance in the hips and legs, as well as bending and lifting support for the back, with up to 66 pounds or 30 kilograms of weight compensation. This week, the company announced securing over $16 million in funding to continue developing their operations. Verve Motion are another manufacturer who recently raised a further $20 million for their own safe lift suit. They uploaded a video a few weeks ago showing how their soft and flexible suits are being used in a US distribution center. 130 exosuits have been deployed so far at this warehouse, which help workers reduce strain on their backs from constant lifting. According to their website, these can provide up to 240 newtons of assistive force and can operate for up to 12 hours between charging. Switching to robotics and this week Tesla showed a new video showcasing the progress of their Optimus Gen 2 humanoid robot. It's certainly impressive compared to earlier models and the smoothness and dexterity of the hands looks great. I have still yet to see a robot from any manufacturer that doesn't walk like it's wearing a diaper. I wonder if any of these are currently being tested in real world environments, like the digit robot we've been seeing a lot of recently. Researchers at ETH Zurich continue their interesting robotics work, this time releasing a paper on a quadruped robot called Barry. This four-legged mule is designed to carry up to 90 kilogram or 200 pound payloads of different types, including weights, lumber and even people. I think all this news underlines how robots are working their way into the workplace more and more. Moving over to AI news and after the release of their Gemini AI model, Google also announced a range of new generative AI tools for developers and Google Cloud customers, including the Imogen 2 text-to-image generator. Outside of generating high-quality photorealistic images from prompts, this model also has some interesting features such as text rendering and logo generation, which allows users to create from scratch or overlay text and logos onto existing images for branding purposes. As someone with a background in graphic design, it is quite something to watch the early stages of an entire industry becoming obsolete. In similar news, Midjourney AI has launched the alpha version of its image generator through a new web interface. If you're already signed up to Midjourney and have generated over 10,000 images, you should have access to this new service. Nick St. Pierre on X gave a quick overview of the alpha, showing how the new interface should help streamline image generation. Over in augmented reality news, and Vuzix announced a new breakthrough for their smart glasses. Dubbed Vuzix Incognito, this new technology removes forward eye glow, normally associated with waveguide type augmented reality glasses, so now other people can't see what is on your display, as well as reducing any potential light haze that a user might see when wearing them. There's not much information on how it was achieved other than using a new proprietary waveguide design that intentionally bends light away from the front of the display. In manufacturing news and Bamboo Lab launched their new A1 consumer printer a few days ago. It has 256mm cubed build volume, full auto calibration, multicolor printing option, active motor noise cancellation and more, with prices starting at only $399. I think this printer and ones like it really mark the progress of consumer level 3D printing over the past few years, and it reminds me of the early days of paper printing. Back then you had to calibrate and constantly mess with printers just to have them function normally, but now it's basically all automatic. I think we're soon approaching that stage with 3D printers, where inexpensive high quality systems will essentially be fully plug and play for non-technical users. And ending this week with a bit more flying machine news, and more electric VTOLs have been receiving flight permits around the world. This time Jetson became the first ultralight e-VTOL manufacturer to gain permission for pilots to fly the Jetson 1 aircraft both manned and unmanned in Italy. Currently these permits will be used to further develop the platform for true commercial use, but it is a milestone for such machines in the country. It's difficult to imagine these type of things flying everywhere, but you can't deny there is currently a trend happening with lots of time and money being invested into this area. Alright that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.